Today, we are going to talk about sun salutations um, and about some of the ways that we might consider teaching them in our, in our practicum classes, and then um, some of the variations of a sun salutation. So it's sort of a little bit of a, a deeper dive, I guess, into, into sun salutations. So um, if you're not at that point in the course yet, there's a workshop with Juan um, about sun salutations. So this is just another uh, resource that you might choose to use for this. So um, many, many, many of you might be familiar with sun salutations because they are the backbone of the uh, vinyasa practice. Um, that we are maybe, most of us are more common with. There's other styles of yoga that, of course, uh, use a lot of uh, sun salutations as the backbone of the practice, but for all intents and purposes today, we'll just refer to that as sort of a vinya like the vinyasa classes. So if you're considering doing a vinyasa practice for your practicum class, then this is something you'll really want to work on integrating. Some of the things that I notice over the years of teaching that students, oh, that's Diego making a cameo, um, that some of the students struggle with um, are the breath cues for sun salutations. I'm not sure what happened to my, my face here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the light didn't change. I don't know what happened. Um, so some of the things that students I see struggle with sometimes are the breath cues and the fluidity of movement. That's like the first thing is, practicing the breath cues for sun salutations. Now the other thing is, and um, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but the other thing is the cues. Like how much should you cue a sun salutation? Um, I think lots of times, myself included, we take for granted that people know what they are. And so sometimes you could go to a class and the teacher might just say the names of the poses. We're gonna do a sun salutation Inhale, reach up, exhale, fold, halfway lift, plank pose, chaturanga, up dog, downward dog. Um, and I've been a student in those classes before, and those are, you know, usually classes that we might air quote call advanced or where, you know, that people have been practicing with a teacher for like 20 years, there's nobody new, everybody knows what they're doing. But um, most of us teach all levels classes. We teach classes that have drop-ins and lots of new students or, you know, people just sometimes forget or they're, you know, in a class, you're not always 100% aware all of the time. So the cues for sun salutations um, can be really, really helpful. So my general way of doing this, and this is just one way, so with a, with a grain of salt as everything, my way of doing it is that I give a lot more, again, with the, with the light, it's uh, not even a filter, but there you go. I give a lot more cues for the first sun salutation, a lot more cues. And then as we go through, if we're doing more and more, I might say a little less or I might say some different things. Um, but it depends how my students are reacting and moving. So those are the, kind of the things that I'm watching for as a teacher and I'm adapting as we go, if they're, if I'm noticing that we're on the fourth sun salutation and people still are maybe not totally understanding what I mean by, by lowering down, then I'm gonna keep giving as many suggestions as I can. And if, you know, at that point, everybody seems to um, be, be managing that uh, in a way that works for them and their bodies today, then I might choose to focus on some other things. So yeah, that's kind of the things to maybe consider about in your classes. And to begin with, we're gonna get this guy off the mat, maybe, <laughs> and uh, we'll just go through a broken up sun salutation. You can choose to sit while you do this, or if you have a mat ready close by and handy, you can grab your mat. I'm gonna yell a little bit as I get further away from the camera, so just bear with, and likely you're gonna see my head disappear, so I'll bend my knees as I walk back. Okay, so this is sun salutation a. Um, sun salutation B is a little bit different and varies on depending on lineage, but just for now we'll focus on sun salutation A. Diego, Diego, can you move? Good boy. Okay, so it starts in Tadasana. My head will now leave the frame. 
Your feet could be hip width apart or together. I like to bring my feet together, but that's just personal preference. Head is still on, just a bit out of the frame. Arms by the sides. The first inhale is the reach up. So extended Tadasana sometimes it's called. The exhale is a folding down into forward fold, a little micro bend in the knees, the fingertips coming to blocks or to the mat. The next inhale is a halfway lift. So I like to bring my hands to my shins. Some people leave their fingertips on the mat. And then the exhale, the forward fold again. So the fingertips to mat or blocks. Inhale, step to half plank or plank. So the feet come back. I like to bring my knees down for the first one and my thighs on an angle. Diego loves sun salutations because of the energy going, so he gets a little excited. Um, so you just have to ignore him. So we've got a, so we inhale into our plank. Diego can move. Thank you. And then we exhale to lean forward and lower all the way down to the mat. So we're wrapping the elbows in as we come down. The next inhale is, a, is a, a little back bend. So the first time I do a sun salutation, I like to just do a little baby cobra or a few baby cobra pulses, but you can come into cobra or up dog maybe. We exhale to fold back down, and then we inhale to press back to plank or half plank, and then exhale back to downward dog. Generally at this point in your downward dog, you know, you might stay there for a few breaths. I think traditionally it's about five breaths, but it depends on the day, what you're teaching, the theme you have, all of those things. So, you know, just staying there for a few moments. So we're in down with dog, and then we inhale, look to the hands, bend the knees a little bit. With the exhale, we're stepping back to our forward fold. So we're back to the top of the mat. Inhale, the halfway lift again, so we're lengthening the spine, hands to shins or fingertips to mat. Exhale as you fold, and then inhale, you're sweeping all the way back up, and then exhale the hands to your chest. So, that was Sun Salutation A, and we just kind of went through the movements a little bit there. So now I'll teach it like I would teach it in a class I was teaching. So how would I cue it for the first round of sun salutation? So here's how it's going to go. We'll get Diego off the mat. Diego, can you come over here please? Diego, come, 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 come. Good boy. Okay. Oh, see, he's so distracted. It's just so fun. Yoga's fun for, for animals. They just, they just love it. Okay, so this is me teaching sun salutation A. Stepping to the top of your mat, we'll move through something known as a sun salutation, which is a series of movements with breath. I'll offer quite a few modifications here, and this is just the first time through for you to explore and to see what's happening in your body. So at the top of your mat, coming into Tadasana with your feet hip width apart or your feet together, the arms by your sides or shoulders resting down. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose, Exhale through the nose. With your next inhale breath, start to sweep your arms up towards the ceiling, reaching up. And as you exhale, folding down into forward fold, bending the knees as much as you need to to bring the fingertips to your mat or your hands to blocks. With your next inhale breath, slide the hands to your shins, lengthen your spine halfway, so crown of the head reaching forward. Exhale as you fold, forward, fold. Bend the knees a little more, hands to the mat. Inhale, step to half plank or plank. So knees up, thigh, feet, knees down, thighs on an angle, or your knees lifted up off your mat. Press the finger pads into your mat. Really feel the strengthening of your upper back. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, lean forward and start to wrap the elbows in as you mindfully lower the body down to the mat, coming through what's known as chaturanga. Baby cobra pulse is here, so hands by the shoulders. Inhale, start to float the head, chest, and shoulders off the mat, just a little hover. Exhale to lower down. We'll do that two more times. Inhale as you hover the head, chest, and shoulders up away from the mat, lengthening the spine. Exhale as you fold, last one. Inhale, baby cobra pulse here, lengthening your spine. 
exhale to fold back down. Inhale, press back to hands and knees. And exhale, coming back to your downward facing dog. In your downward dog, keep pressing the pads of your fingers into your mat. Lift your hips up towards the ceiling. Knees can be as bent as they need to be here. One more deep breath in. And a deep breath out. With your next inhale, look to your hands, bend your knees. And as you exhale, take as many steps as you need to walk back to the top of your mat into forward fold. Inhale, slide the hands to your shins, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, press into the feet, sweep the arms up, come all the way up to stand. And then exhale, bring the hands to your chest. So that would be our first, uh, <laughs> our first sun salutation A. And and it's nice to break it down for students because lots of times um, when we are moving so quickly, it's really hard to follow. It's really hard to kind of know what's happening. We're maybe not always able to see the teacher in some of those shapes. So that's why you might have noticed that I held plank for a little longer than just an inhale. So sometimes when I'm doing it the first time, I'll hold some things for a few breaths longer, sometimes that first forward fold too, just to talk about some of the elements. And then the second time, we can start to sort of move a little bit more fluidly with the breath here. So then this might be the second time. We're back to Tadasana. So we just did our first sun salutation here. And then with the next inhale breath, reach the arms up. Exhale, folding into forward fold, micro bend the knees, fingertips to hand, fingertips to mat or hands to blocks. Inhale, halfway lift, slide the hands to your shins, lengthen your spine halfway. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, hands to the mat. Inhale, step to your half plank or your plank. And exhale as you lean forward, lower all the way down to your mat. Inhale into baby cobra or high cobra here. So you might stay in a little bit of a hover or you might lift a little bit longer, lengthen your spine, opening the chest. Exhale as you fold down. Inhale, press back to half plank or plank. Exhale back to downward dog. We hang out in downward dog a few breaths. And then we inhale, look to the hands, bend the knees, exhale, stepping yourself to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale to fold and inhale, sweep all the way up and then exhale, hands to your chest. So you might notice that time, I said a little bit less um, and we moved a little bit more with the breath. And so offering their low cobra and high cobra and then sort of the, the evolution of a sun salutation. So now everybody in our class, if they're new to this or they've been doing it a while, they kind of know what's happening. And so this next one, um, we can offer the regular sort of chaturanga, which is lowering halfway or all the way down, and then taking cobra or up dog. So I have a place, so I've set a foundation of where people who are new or who are unsure, they, they know where, hi Susan, hi, hi Avin, hi everybody. Um, I'm out of breath, some salutations are really hard. Um, so we've set a foundation, people have a base from which to work with, and now we can offer a few progressions. So we're offering some, let's call them variations. They're, they're not really variations because these are sort of the standard traditional sun salutation. So we're here, we're gonna inhale, reach the arms up, and we exhale, fold down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift to lengthen the spine. Exhale, hands to the mat, step to half plank or plank. Inhaling in your plank, and exhale, chaturanga, lean forward, lower halfway or all the way down to the mat. Inhale into cobra or into upward facing dog. If you're an upward facing dog, tops of your feet to your mat, knees lifted, chest open. And then exhaling back to your downward dog, and then we hang out in our downward dog and we finish our sun salutation there. So, I don't think a lot of time. Oh, I don't think a lot of times um, 
student, we, new students might be confused by what Chaturanga is. So by letting them know what it is, instead of just saying the name, we can just help them empower them a little bit. Um, the reality is there's not time, always time in a class to kind of workshop all of these elements. So we're sort of throwing in little bits here and there. We're making sure that everybody has a safe base. And then from there, we're adding in certain things. What you'll find most of the time, to be honest, and I know that I do this in a class, is that if a teacher is teaching sun salutations, I just kind of do what makes sense for me. Like I know how to do certain things that work for my body um, in a sun salutation. And so those are the things that I'm likely just going to do naturally. So I, so like as a teacher, don't always feel pressured to, to say everything that needs to be said. You know, like um, maybe, maybe you don't speak much about a certain thing because the students who know how to do that because it's maybe, you know, a little bit more challenging for some people, they're just going to do it anyway. So um, I think sometimes we can get a little caught up in, in trying to offer something for everybody. And, and I think we need to cover our bases with the new students and the injured students and make sure that they're safe and protected. And then where we have space, we can offer variations, the things that make things a little bit more challenging, but just know too that those students who are looking for those things might just find them on their own. So, so I think, you know, cover your bases and as you have the time, space and energy, offer the things that we would maybe refer to as variations. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so let's go through one more sun salutation A and then we'll talk about sun salutation B because it's a little different um, and it's fun. So, so here we are, we're, we're in Tadasana. So we find our Tadasana, this is our starting point for the sun salutation. And then we inhale, reach up, lengthening upwards. Exhale, folding down, forward fold, little bend in the knees, fingertips to the mat. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthen, halfway lift. Exhale, fold hands to the mat, step to plank or half plank, and lower halfway or all the way down, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or maybe upward facing dog as you lift and lengthen your spine. Exhale, folding down. Inhale, press back to plank or half plank. Exhale, down with facing dog. And then we finish and we step forward again. <laughs> um, so two things to note here. Two fun things to note. When I'm stepping back to plank from forward fold, sometimes I take a breath or I take a, a, a little pause on the step back. Traditionally, traditionally this is sort of what happens. So you'd inhale up. Exhale, fold forward, fold, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right back to plank and chaturanga on that same exhale breath. And then inhale into your back bend. What I generally like to do, it's just personal, because I find that's a really long exhale breath and then I sort of rush. And I like to set up plank so I'm nice and strong and stable, is I'm in my halfway lift, let's say, inhale, lengthening halfway lift. Exhale, fold hands to the mat, step to plank. I inhale in my plank, and then I exhale into chaturanga. So I just added in an extra inhale, and I'm still doing the same movements on the same breath, so I'm still lowering on the exhale breath. So some things to think about if you're teaching sun salutation A in your classes, and again, this is just one way to kind of think about it. Um, there's many ways to think about it, but some kind of take home points about this particular sequence are to offer cues, to get really familiar with the breath cues. The breath cues are key and it's the breath cues that you practice in this that you'll be able to bring into your flow or vinyasa classes so they have a real sense of flow. Um, the more of this sort of connection of movement to breath you can bring in and the more practiced you are in offering those cues, then the more your classes will have this like beautiful, fluid, flowy feeling. I'm just going to check the time because I wanted to... Okay, yeah, 
we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, let's talk about sun salutation B. It's a little different. We're not going to spend as much time on it. But it starts in chair pose. So, again, feet hip width apart or together. Totally up to you. So we'll go through it pretty slowly here. So we're in Tadasana. We're going to inhale, reach up. Exhale, sit into your chair pose. Inhale in chair. And exhale, fold, forward fold. Fingertips to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift to lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step to plank or half plank. And exhale, chaturanga, lower halfway or all the way down. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. And exhale, press back to plank or half plank, downward facing dog. In downward dog, inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, warrior one, right foot to right thumb, back foot at 45 degrees. Inhale as you sweep up, warrior one. Exhale, hands down, step to plank or half plank, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga, lowering halfway or all the way down. Inhale, cobra, up dog, really lengthening through your spine. Exhale, fold, press back to plank or half plank, inhale. And exhale, downward dog. Inhale, left leg lifts and downward dog. Exhale, warrior one, left foot to left thumb, right foot at 45 degrees. Inhale as you sweep up. Exhale, hands coming down. Inhale, step to plank or half plank. Exhale, chaturanga, wrap the elbows in as you come halfway or all the way down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale to lower, press back to plank or half plank as you inhale. Exhale, downward dog. So downward dog would be five breaths, five breaths in downward dog. Let's just pretend. Inhale, look to the hands, bend the knees, exhale, walk, step or hop yourself into forward fold, in Tanasana. Inhale, halfway lift to lengthen. Exhale as you fold, inhale, bend the knees deeply, sweep the arms up into chair pose. And exhale, hands to your chest, Tanasana. So that would be a variation of Sun Salutation B. There's obviously... Um, a whole manner of ways that you could choose to teach this. Um, I still like to have a little bit more space for my planks, like a little bit more time. Um, but again, you could do the same thing as um, some do in Sun Salutation A, which is from the forward fold, use the exhale just to step right back into plank and lower down. Um, it's quite fast, like one breath, one movement pretty much. Um, and and it really gets the heat going and it really gets the heart rate going. So that's Sun Salutation B, um, super fun. So the other thing to talk about here, whilst we're on the topic of Sun Salutations, is what did it look like in a flow class? So say you're wanting to teach a vinyasa class. So how do you incorporate Sun Salutations? Um, so again, there's no sort of prescriptive way to do this, but the backbone of the sun salutation becomes the backbone of your vinyasa class. So you might start your class, let's say for example, you're teaching your vinyasa class and you do a, you know, you're seated, you do a nice warm up, you do some cat cow stuff, you do, you come to downward dog maybe, and then what you could do is break down part of the sun salutation so you could start to teach and work some of those elements. So you're coming to half plank and you're teaching your students to lower down and to find some cobra shapes and to come back and you could do that a few times just to really get them to get them to have a sense of that movement and then you might come to stand and then you do maybe three to five sun salutations of your choice and what you can start to do is in the downward dogs so so Sun Salutation B has Warrior 1 in there. You can do Sun Salutation A through a vinyasa class and add in lunges and add in Warrior 2s. Um, so instead of holding the downward dog and coming back to the top of the mat, you'd be in downward dog and then you start to do some of your standing poses and, uh, and things like this. So, and as you do that, as you, as you do, say you do a Sun Salutation A, we'll call it A because we're not coming into chair, the halfway 
we lift, and then you're coming down, and then we're gonna meet back in downward dog, and then we'll inhale, lift the right leg up, and we'll exhale, we'll come to high lunge, and we'll inhale to reach up in our high lunge, and maybe we'll take like lovely cactus arms here, and then we'll inhale, reach up, and then we'll exhale, come down. Then you could come right back to downward dog and do the other side, or you could take chaturanga here and up dog or cobra and come back to downward dog, and then we'll do the left side, so the left leg lifts as you inhale, and exhale, we're coming into our high lunge, and then we'll take our cactus arms, and then we'll inhale to reach up, and then we'll exhale to come down, and we could take what's known as a vinyasa, which is chaturanga, cobra or up dog, and then back to downward dog. And then maybe from here we keep going with that kind of movement. We do some more standing poses on the right side, and then the left side, or maybe we step to the top of the mat, and we finish this cycle of sun salutation, and then we start again on the other side. So you can get really quite creative, which is part of what I love about the sun salutations and about teaching vinyasa classes, is, is you can start to really creatively work strings of poses together, and they all have this connection of a sun, of an element of the sun salutation. And now the nice thing as a teacher to offer um, is that these things that we call vinyasas, so we're here in a flow class and we've just done maybe like a, a warrior two thing and then we come back and you might offer that students could move through a vinyasa or come straight to downward dog. If you're coming through the vinyasa, inhaling in your plank or half plank and exhaling as you lower down, inhaling into cobra or up dog and then meeting everybody back in downward dog. So the thing about this part, about offering optional vinyasas, is to still cue them. So instead of just saying, take a vinyasa if you'd like to take a vinyasa or come to downward dog or child's pose, let's cue our students through the more complicated movements that need them. The people in, in downward dog and child's pose probably are okay, but let's keep working on helping our students find creative cues and different ways of experiencing the sun salutation. So I think as a teacher, it's sort of our, our duty to to offer suggestions where we can and and just saying take a vinyasa is is one way but I think a more supportive inclusive way is to keep cueing because you might get that student who has always been maybe scared to take the vinyasas they think they're oh it's way too challenging or or I'm just not ready for it yet I'm not I've not been practicing long enough and the way that you constantly support with your cues may help them one day decide you know what this is the moment I'm going to take that optional vinyasa for me and you're there to support them through it so that was kind of really fast it went a lot faster than I thought um, and uh, it always does but that's okay um, so that was just kind of a let's just call it a brief overview and workshop of, of some sun salutations and, and maybe another way of approaching them and thinking about them um, and if you do have questions about teaching them in your practicum classes, then just just pop a, a comment here and I'll, I'll be sure to answer that and check them. And again, this can sometimes be kind of a bit overwhelming as a teacher to think about teaching this element of, of, of yoga. And really, it just comes down to practice. Like if you practice the cues, if you practice the breath cues, once you have this, you can do so much. Once you have uh, the ability to cue vinyasas, sun salutations for all levels, you can start to get very fun and very creative with your sequences. You can start to put in those standing poses and to string standing poses together and to really get this lovely fluid flow, just exciting kind of like check, second chakra creative energy in your classes and a lot of that comes down to just the practice of delivery and of understanding. So if it is a place where you think you're going to struggle or you are struggling, just practice, practice, take a lot of vinyasa classes, take a lot of different teachers classes and see 
uh, who does things that really resonate with you. So I think that that's, that's it from me. Um, thank you for joining me. This was, uh, it was really fun. I usually do things that are seated and talking and it was really nice to do something with you guys that's uh, moving and a bit more dynamic. So um, hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of these uh, coming up. And again, any questions about sun salutations or about anything about yoga, I guess, if you're commenting and watching this, then just pop them below. And I will see you all very soon. Thank you.